On today's episode of The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, I'm pulling out my creative toolbox. This is Topaz Studio 2. I'll be using Topaz Studio 2 to take a photograph and turn it into an abstract painting. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. You know, I haven't done a Topaz Studio 2 creative toolbox in a while, and I thought I would do one for you today. I found this image. This is a stock image, and I'll link it in the description below this video in case you want to give this a try. This will be very simple and easy to do. I'll be using a couple filters inside of Topaz Studio 2, and I'll even show you how to create your own look so you could try this out on different images. I'm going for more of an abstract style approach with some nice heavy lines in it. You'll see what I mean here in a sec. The first thing I want to do is create a blank pixel layer above this layer in Photoshop. And with the spot healing tool, see this little line coming up through here. I think this will kind of get in our way. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. I could get rid of it later if I don't like it, but let's get rid of it now. And then what I'll do is just right click on this layer and click on merge down. And now we just have that one layer. And now I want to duplicate the background layer. That's command or control J to duplicate the background layer because we don't want to actually alter the original background image. Just in case we want to show some of that through later. I don't think I will, but I never like to work in the background layer. Now let's go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2. You'll find it under your filter menu. And mine's right here, so I'll click on Topaz Studio 2, and we shall get started. And here we are inside of Topaz Studio 2. We're just going to come up here to Add Filter, so click on Add Filter. The first thing I'm going to do is come to the AI Remix filters in the Stylistic section. Click on AI Remix. And what I'm going to do is you have different style strengths. I'm going to use High. That's going to give you the most detail, if that makes any sense. And uh, I sampled different ones of these, you know, and you'll click on these and you'll say, oh my gosh, what can I do with that? Believe it or not, you could do a lot with that. Blend modes really come in handy. I'm not going to be using this one right now, but I like this one right here called Baby Blues. Let me click on it. And the reason I like it, it has a lot of lines. Remember I said at the beginning, I want to have some nice heavy lines in this image. So what we're going to do is change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And already you can see that looks pretty cool. It's a little dark, so I'm going to take my brightness and we're going to lighten up the brightness. And I think maybe right here, right around 44. And let's take the contrast layer. Let's drag it to the right a little bit. Maybe, maybe right about here I think looks pretty good. Up in the sky, these dark lines, I'm not really into those, but I'll get rid of those when we get back in Photoshop with that spot healing tool. It's really easy to get rid of those, so we're just going to leave them here. The next thing I want to do is add another filter, and this is the only other filter I'll be adding, and that will be this impression filter. Now, the first thing I like to do with the impression filter is to find the right paint stroke. But before I do that, I like to drag the whole way down. There's a lot of different things you can do inside of this filter. And I like to come down to where it says texture and change this background type from solid to original because you see these little white flecks in here. If I click on original, they go away. And I always like to start that way. Sometimes they're nice to have in there, but more often than not, I don't. Now, the next thing you want to do is kind of pick a brush stroke that kind of works for you. So this is type 1. This is type 2. If you look at type 2 in this area right here, it kind of reminds me of a Van Gogh painting. And that's really what I ended up using. But you can go and click around and try different strokes and see what they look like. They're all going to give you different effects. But depending on what effect you're looking for, then that's the one to use. But for me, I think it's going to be Type O2 because it gives me that more Van Gogh look in certain areas. Right under Stroke, we have Number of Strokes. Now, Topaz Studio 2 defaults at Medium. Let me click on Low. If I click on Low, watch in this area right in here. I'm clicking on low. See how it gets a little more abstract. If I go to medium, a little more paint detail comes in there. And if I go to high, even more. And I really think I like, it's either medium or high. Here's medium. What do you think? Medium or high. Decisions, decisions. Here's high. Here's medium. I think I'm going to go with medium. Now here's brush size. I think I'll drag this the whole way to the right just so you can see what it does. See how those strokes get really big and really abstract. 
And if we start to drag it to the left, you can see the strokes are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and more details start to come out. And I think I like it right about here at like 54. Usually after brush size, I like to go to paint opacity and this lets you really see the definition of the stroke. So let me drag this to the right so you can really see it. See how those strokes get really defined in there. And I think I'm gonna put this somewhere right around 77, I like that. I think that looks pretty good right there. Now, if you take the paint volume, kind of watch up here in the sky as I drag this the whole way to the right, you can see the paint texture starting to pop out up in there. And depending on what kind of look you want, you can drag that up. A lot of times I don't use much of that, so I'm just gonna take it the whole way off for now because I really like the look of the image right now. There's only one more thing I'm going to do. Now, there's a whole bunch more adjustments in here like stroke rotation, rotation variation, color variation, stroke width, and length. So there's a lot of things you can do. You can add some smudge. This can be cool. I'll drag this to the right so you can see. See how it starts to smudge up the painting? But here's one that I want to use today. This is a fun one to use, Paint Progress. I'll drag this slider the whole way to the left. Now, basically what this does is it simulates a painting progress. You know, when a painter starts out a painting, they may block it in, and that's kind of what you see here, and then they would start building up and building up. But this simulates that progress. So let's start to drag it to the right, and then you just have to stop and tune it up when you get to the area that you'd like. So let's start to drag this to the right, and let me know when you see a spot that you like. Very interesting what you see going on there. Now, I'm gonna keep going and keep going here. I'm starting to like what I'm starting to see here. There's 70, that's pretty cool right there. It's 70, here's 71, 72, 73. Okay, that's not bad. Right there at 77 is looking pretty nice. Let me drag it back a couple notches here. There's 76. There's 75, whoops, right right there, 73. 73 is working for me. I was kind of watching this cabin in here, and I like it. I have a nice abstract look here, and I like what the um, AI Remix did. It gave me all these dark lines in here, which kind of adds to the abstract look of this image, and I really like this. Again, I do not like what's happening up here in the sky, but we'll fix that simply in Photoshop. But that's really all I want to do at this time. Let me go ahead and shut off the AI Remix so we can see what it looks like without it. Here it is without AI Remix. Boy, a whole different look, isn't it? That AI Remix is really adding to this image here. But it's giving us these nice oranges up in here. And it's, it's helping on the color of the image. I really like it. But now let me show you how if you get something that you really like, especially in a painting or something like that, it's a good idea to make a look. And to make a look, all you need to do is come up here, see where it says Save Look, give that a click, give your look a name, and I think I'll call this Cabin Painting, and just click on OK. And then if you ever want to add a look that you've created, just come over to Add Look, click on that, and you'll find your look in here. And let's see, under, and these are in alphabetical order, there's my Cabin Painting right there. And we can just X out of here for now. So now you would have that saved for you. And then you could try that out on different images. Now I'm all done in here. So what we're going to do is come up here to the menu and click accept. That'll send us right back into Photoshop. Now here we are back in Photoshop. And remember I told you about these black lines up in the sky. I don't like them. So to get rid of those, I'll get a blank pixel layer. So just click this icon right here. That'll give you a blank pixel layer. Get your spot healing tool. It's this icon right here, or you could type J. That's what I do, it's a shortcut. Getting to know shortcuts can really speed up your workflow. You can adjust your brush size accordingly. Make sure you have sample all layers checked. And then we could just paint off any of the stuff on this image that we don't like, like these black lines. Some of this blue color in here I don't like. And with that spot healing tool, it does a really good job. And sometimes you have to paint over it a couple different times. Get rid of these black lines over in here, over in here. 
this blue in here I don't like right in here there's a little white mark here I don't want so and then you could just come here and clean up any of the little things here that you don't like with the spot healing tool and that's a great way to end your editing session and then you can always come back to this image later and do some more to it but I think for now it's really good we started out looking like this and now with Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox, and your creative toolbox if you have it, there is the final results. Now, you can still purchase Topaz Studio 2. You can click on my affiliate link in the description below this video for Topaz Studio 2, and you can purchase it. And you can still use it with uh, Mac M1 computers, but you got to run Photoshop in the Rosetta mode to enable you to use Topaz Studio 2 with Photoshop. That's kind of important. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. I haven't done any uh, Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolboxes in a while, and I thought it was time to do one. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then... Happy editing!